right, so this is another episode of SM Talk Live. I'm your host, Ruben Wood, and we got a very special guest in the building. I'm going to let you actually introduce yourself. What's up, everybody? This is Ludovica. I'm super excited to be here. Okay. So now, your name is Ludovica. Yeah. Uh, is that your governing name? Was that like a name you came that's, up with? That's my governor name. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's my real name. <laughs> All right, so that's what's up. So now, what actually made you get into doing music, and what was your musical inspirations growing up? Uh, so, I love this question. It's something that I grew up with. How many people grew up with, you know, family, being musicians, and just always being around music. But that's kind of like how fortunate I was. My whole family is into music. We always do, you know, we all do different things in the music industry. Um, but I kind of lost that love by, I think, like 12 or 13. I told my family I didn't want to do music anymore. I just wanted to take it a different route because I felt, you know, they, I don't know, I, I was privileged in this spot. I wasn't actually earning it, you know, with blood, sweat, and tears. It's a whole story, but, um, that's how it basically started. And then I moved here and that's where I started pursuing it professionally. But my inspirations, uh, I've always been a huge Whitney Houston fan. I grew up listening to her, um, a whole bunch of other jazz and soul. I love me some Etta James, you know, I love jazz. It, it actually, besides rap, which is interesting, jazz is, one major sort of inspiration that um, I uh, tend to before writing my R&B or my pop, you know, songs. Okay, so now where are you originally from? Born and raised in Italy, Born Rome, in Italy. Italy. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So now, what was it like growing up over there versus coming to America? It was a huge culture shock. Okay. Uh, obviously, these two places are super different. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was cool, and now like the U.S. feels like my second home. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, like you said, you said you felt like it was a little bit more privileged as far as you getting into the music industry. Now, elaborate on that a little bit. So, like I said, my family, all my family was into music already. It was a generational thing that I was just born into. So I just wanted to do it with my own strength. So that's why I pulled away, not because I lacked or I stopped loving music, but I just wanted to feel how how is it to reach this with my own legs, you know, with my own power and my own will. And, you know, it was also, you know, my, my whole family is into opera. That's their thing, that's their genre. And I was kind of like the black sheep of the family doing R&B. <laughs> so I was like, let me just get this on my own. But it was cool, the journey is what taught me everything. Right, okay. So it's definitely what's up. So now also being from Rome, Italy, man, look. Uh, so what does that mean? Like, are you you a Catholic as well from, from Rome? Or how does that work? I was born, you know how like everybody in Italy is baptized Catholic uh -huh. at birth. I, I didn't know that, so right. that's interesting. I was probably like six months mm. when I was baptized. Okay. You know? um, so that's kind of like a culturally, Catholicism in, in Rome is actually part of Italian culture. Mm. Um, do I affiliate? Uh, I mean, I'm still in their registers, so <laughs> I feel like I am Catholic, but I don't really, you know, I'm spiritual. Right. Yeah, believe right. in God. Okay. All right. So that's what's up. So now, what would you say has probably been some of the biggest struggles for you as an artist to get to the next level? Oh, um, I think it's uh, one major thing is just being in the right place at the right time with the right people. This industry is probably the vastest industry I've ever experienced in my life. And I've doubled different things. I've been in the dance industry. I've been in the art industry. So it just several different things. This, this one in particular is just a lot of people and they're hungry and there's just a lot of different heads and ideas. And so you just gotta find your circle and establish that and be strong with that. And by you moving with your circle, then you'll be able to 
piece everything together and be at the right place at the right time with the right folks. So I think that's um, something that I struggle with, but it's coming along now. Okay. All right, so that's definitely what's up, man. So now, when you look at being an independent artist, do you think that coming into the music industry, because obviously you already had a family mm -hmm. that was doing music, it kind of gave you a step above a lot of the independent artists, or you think you still had a lot to learn about the music business? I had a lot to learn because opera, so I'm classically trained. I did mm -hmm. that in my teenage years. But opera really doesn't place you anywhere above anybody else, you know? Especially if you're not pursuing opera. Mm -hmm. You know, I detached from that. I, I decided to get trained, but I detached from that and now I do R&B. So when I came to the US and I, you know, scoped that ground, it really didn't change anything. It didn't put me on a pedestal because most folks aren't actually classically trained others are so you get all this variety and it's like if you are you are if you're not you're not mm -hmm. i know many like hundreds of people that have made it and never like you know touched music theory or know the scale or no you know what i'm saying so yeah it doesn't it doesn't feel like a privilege it's mm -hmm. for sure amazing to know and be exposed to that but I feel like we all start at the same level. Okay. So that's definitely what's up, man. So now, what would you say is like one thing that you want fans or people to take away when they listen to your music? So I call, I refer to my audience as songbirds, right? Mm -hmm. um, and reason being is because uh, my branding, Ludovica Songs, is all about the song, the idea, and the idea of the song. And a bird to me is just a symbol of freedom. So in my, my songs, I'm portraying the experiences, either past or future experiences that I've been through or that I'm about to go through and to break that down piece by piece for them to understand what to take away and what to learn and how to, you know, do this thing that's life. And at the end of the day, I don't want them to be trapped. I want, them, I want them to fly, to be free, to find that freedom within the struggles, within the obstacles. So if there is one thing I preach is be free. Don't let anything stop you. Because truly, when, when they say you're the only piece in the world that can stop yourself, it's 100% true. So just be free, fly away and do your thing. Never limit yourself. Okay. So that's definitely what's up. So now let's talk about the latest project. What is the name of your latest project that you're working on or that you're currently promoting? So my latest project is a Body of Work. And it's a song that we shot last year, heavily promoted. Uh, shout out to Evan Moore for shooting the whole music video. It was an amazing project and it talked about um, it was cool, the, the story, I took my audience on a journey and uh, I told them that love is like sculpting a sculpture, you know, and it takes work. And if you cherish something, you keep it and it's probably gonna last, most likely gonna last. So, and it becomes at the end of the day, a piece of artwork. So it's, it's yeah, why you work, check it out. <laughs> Okay, so that's definitely what's up then. Yeah. So now we're actually going to switch the pace of the interview up. I'm going to ask you some random questions and I hope you're ready. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> Shoot me. All right, so question number one. What would you say is the craziest thing you've done in life? Wow. I think moving to the U.S. was crazy. Mm. Now, why you say that? So, just to fill you in, I was 16. Mm. I never rode in a plane. I never went out of my house. I never left my city. You know. And imagine, like, your first trip is when you got two luggages and yourself. Mm. And you know you're not going back. And it's across the world. 
it taught me so much and it just broke so many boundaries that I didn't know existed. And it just shifted everything within me. So it was the craziest, but in a positive way, the craziest thing I've ever done. So did you, so basically did you leave Rome for like a reason or were you like, you had to leave? Yeah, so um, that was the period where I was like, I don't wanna do music because I don't wanna be helped. I wanna do it by myself. But at the same time, <clears throat> I wanted to come to the Americas to just study and mm -hmm. get an education. So that's why that's why I moved to the US. Okay. I went to school, got a degree, and then pursued music. Okay. So question number two, who would you say uh, was one of your favorite teachers growing up? Ooh. It's probably one that really, really gave me a hard time because I love where people give me tough love because it teaches me a lot. Um, you know what? It was probably my math teacher. My, in fact, middle school math teacher. I hated math like so much and I'm still not good at it. I can do base, basic math, but it's just, it's just a subject that never like stick with me. But he was so, um, he went above and beyond to explain things. And if you will, like, he, he helped me understood, understand it, like, from a different point of view, from a more artistic point of view. Because, um, you know, all this, the geometry and the math behind it and the scientific behind it wasn't truly makes sense. And that's why school is so crazy, because... It's not really about the subject being sucky. It's like, do you have the right teacher to teach that subject to you? So he was definitely, he was definitely one of my most favorite ones. Okay. So that's definitely what's up, man. So now question number three, what would you say is the craziest thing that a man has said to you? Oh, that's spicy. <laughs> craziest thing a man has ever said to me. People are probably gonna like give me so much shit. Anyways, um, I would say when uh, men assume that I'm literally with everybody to do this music thing, you know? Okay. They, when you stumble into those kinds of men that are like, yeah, I bet if you stand in this studio is because da da da. So the craziest thing is a man's assumption of why you were here in the face of what <laughs> Basically, in a few words, yeah, they um they think you gotta do certain things to be who I am. Okay. Yeah. Alright. But you've never done any certain thing. No, I keep myself <laughs> to myself. I do the job, I cluck it, I cluck it, I make music. Okay. All right. <laughs> I make music, yeah. All right, so question number four, what would you say is your top five favorite foods? Ooh, okay. Are we like naming dishes or are we naming like countries that make those dishes? We naming dishes. Okay. Uh, so top of the list, I love me some jerk chicken. Okay. So Jamaica for me is definitely number one. Mm-hmm. I love me my country's food, Italian. Got to put it place number two. Okay. Um, and if we're naming dishes, I'm sidetracking. My favorite dish is, I would say, ravioli. Ravioli. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I got three more to go. Uh -huh. I mean... When it comes down to it, we all love some tacos. Tacos, but okay. they gotta be good quality tacos, <laughs> especially the carne asada ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I love me some al pastor with the with the piña with the pineapple. Okay. All my Hispanic can't really. Uh. <laughs> Who's standing in place number four? Let's see. Okay, Mangu from Dominican Republic. Mangu, okay, wow. Throw it down. Um, last but not least. I don't know, man. I might as well. 
Indian food. Indian. Some curry. Curry? Yeah, tikka masala. Tikka masala, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Diverse is out. Like, know. wait, hold on. Okay, so we got jerk chicken. We got ravioli and Italian food. We went all over the place. <laughs> we got uh, tacos. <laughs> we got the mango. We got the mango. <laughs> and then we got the, the uh, Indian food, the curry chicken, and the, how did you say the last one? Is it called tikka masala? Ticket massage. Okay, all right. I don't know, but that's that's what we going with. Yeah. So curry, curry with chicken. the nun. Have you ever had garlic nun? I can't say that I actually have. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll put but, you on. But roti, you know, I, I've eaten the roti. There you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We work right. I like food. Let me tell you this. I'm a foodie. Okay. I love food. Food is like my fuel. Okay. <laughs> food connoisseur. Yes, okay. definitely. Right. Food but good food. Good food. Good food connoisseur. Okay. <laughs> so the next question I'm gonna ask you is what would you say is probably like one of your most favorite verses uh from a song of yours? And how does it go? Who am I? That was my trust my heart, love myself. Who am I? Something I can never realize with you. Way too busy thinking I've been lied to. So there's so much behind that song. And that song describes my first ever breakup. So, so sad. But I try to broke it down for people and to really explain to them that unless you really know who you are, you can't share that with right. anybody else. Right. So be complete, be your own individual, and then share yourself with somebody else. But don't go seek, you know, answers that you're supposed to answer for yourselves, you know, from other people. Right. You, you hold within you all the answers to your questions. Okay. So now getting back to the regular interview, what would you say is probably some of the best advice that you've been given on how to maneuver and navigate through the music and entertainment industry? Mm. So have you ever heard of this guy, 19 Keys? Mm -hmm. So super genius, in my opinion. And I've been listening to his podcast. I've recently been put onto him. I can't believe I, I found out about him this late. I wish I, I, I did like years ago when he started. But ever since I found out, I just scrolled down to his Spotify and I started listening to every single podcast of his. And he's already taught me so much. And funny enough, he's not directly connected with the music industry, mm -hmm. but he speaks worldwide and he, and he covers every topic possible and imaginable. And it's relatable all across the platforms. Something that, that he said, one of the many things that he said that stick with me is that, um, you should worry about creating content than being content. Mm -hmm. So always worried about content creating. Don't ever stop that flow. Don't ever get content with yourself. So push away all the boundaries, push away all the, the, the mental fucks that you create in your own head and the fear. And if I post this, what is people's reaction? What is people gonna say? Just do it. Just keep the creation flow always active mm -hmm. and open. And, and just do it without any fear behind it. And don't get content, don't get complacent. Okay, so that's definitely what's up, man. So now, where can people find you at on social media? Most definitely. So it's Ludovica songs everywhere on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, um, even Snapchat. Um, I'm there on Instagram as well. It's songs with the Z at the end. And yeah, man. I'm everywhere. Okay. So before we get up 